It's been true since 2002 that all Pokémon games are the same game with a new coat of paint, but I have never spiritually felt the stagnation until Omega Ruby, and it's only showing more today with Pokémon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Somewhere in this 3DS game cartridge is a game of catching, battling, and leveling up unique, cool monsters, and it's fun to catch, battle, and level up monsters in the game. It's so fun that I've been doing it since 2001, when I was 5 years old, and there are so many mechanics, moves, type combinations, abilities, and hold items that I am almost permanently preoccupied with the optimization of my Pokémon team on my quest to become the very best. The game is in there somewhere, but the experience is hidden, muddled behind a bunch of things. As with all Pokémon games, Ultra Moon starts with a three-hour introductory sequence that's the most boring, patronizing, time-wasting thing, and it's bad and I don't like it. But at the four-hour mark, after I wrote 3,000 words on why Pokémon is boring, I booted it up again and it felt like I was playing Pokémon for a minute there. It felt like I was playing a real video game, fighting trainers and leveling up my cool dudes. But once I beat the Kahuna of Melee Melee Island, the cutscenes came back and I got a Tauros ride complete with a goofy costume and I had to ride a Mantine to the other island and that was a boring minigame that I just put the controller down halfway through and it still let me through. Is this a Pokemon game? Is this real? I've said it before, Pokemon has so many little mechanics regarding the Pokemon themselves that it must bend over backwards to accommodate it all. Trainer's school became required so that players could learn about hold items and type advantages and technical machines. Managing hold items, teaching my Pokémon new moves, and managing my team for maximum optimization is fun, and it is a thing that happens in Pokémon Ultra Moon. But when the game grabs me by the wrist and forces me to do the thing in the name of teaching me how to do the thing, it's not fun at all. The problem with cutscenes in games is that they don't take advantage of the medium of action and reaction. They are not interactive, and because of that, they are less special as a moment. Cutscenes work in games when they present something special or dazzling, or something that would be harder to convey through the game's current systems, but the cutscenes in Pokémon Ultra Moon only contain people standing around and talking to each other, which isn't an inherently interesting or engaging event to watch. And the things that they say and the way that they say it isn't charming enough to make up for it either. There is no appeal to the cutscenes in Pokémon Sumo. They technically tell a story, and they technically have character arcs, but it sucks, and it takes up too much of the player's time not to be problematic. The problem with non-optional tutorials in games is that it wastes the time of players who already know the rules. The point of a tutorial is to teach players, and Ultra Moon's tutorials sure do teach. But the point of the game itself is to entertain, and tutorials aren't entertaining. They're about as entertaining as sitting through an electronics class after a semester of mechatronics and realizing that they're the same exact course. And the solution is so simple too. Make all tutorials optional and skippable always. Nintendo's tutorials and cutscenes are not special enough, they are not entertaining enough to justify having to go through them all. Children don't need as much of a helping hand to learn the system as Pokémon Ultra Moon forces upon players. And, in fact, Ultra Moon can be brute forced with the starter and a couple of same type attack bonus moves pretty easily, so it's not like they need it anyway. Children are capable, children are curious, children are inquisitive and experimental, children can figure out Pokémon. You know how I know? Because they did in 1996. And it's not too much more complicated now, and even then, the complications... I don't think that Pokémon has become overcomplicated in the 20 years that it has grown, such that you can't just figure it out on your own. The problem with Pokémon is that it's filled, filled, chock to the brim with stuff, dropped, reintroduced, and dropped again, but none of it is very polished. Battles stall, lag, and delay decently often, creating a stilted, slow experience. When the game doesn't have a steady frame rate, the visual appeal dies. And that's basically it. That's basically the point. And that's a lack of visual polish. The soundtrack is just like every other Pokémon soundtrack in the past seven years, and it's not very appealing anymore. The lack of polish comes from the lack of effort to distinguish Ultra Moon from its predecessors. It's set in Hawaii, but... So what? Running around with Tauros in the rock cave, his shadow is clipping through the geometry, and that looks bad. The metagame has been imbalanced since Mega Evolutions were introduced, turning the VGC Championships into the same team six times. And that problem doesn't affect the main game, but it's depressing to see as a side activity. There are minigames everywhere, and none of them are very good. Mantine surfing is boring. Again, I just put the controller down and he just went. Like, turning left and right wasn't very... I don't know, it wasn't good. I didn't like it. You do tricks, you do the same two tricks, and it's like, whoa, no, it's no, it's not, it's not.
Taking pictures of Pokémon isn't fun the way it was implemented. There's a set Pokémon in a set area where the player is allowed to take pictures and they can't zoom or move the camera very much and the Pokémon just kind of does whatever it wants. And then you submit the photos and it gets a thousand thumbs up and it's like, what was the point of any of this? I feel nothing. That's the feeling this evokes. You can zoom for better pictures, but to do that you have to take a bunch of poor pictures first to level up your camera. I have to level up my camera to get a zoom function. Why am I talking about any of this at all if it's such a throwaway mechanic? Because the tutorial for it was required. You can't see the haircut your character is going to get until after you get it, which means if you want your avatar to look good, you're going to have to save and soft reset or look up the one you want on Cerebi.net. That may imitate life, but it's not very fun as a video game mechanic. The feeling Pokemon Ultra Moon inspires within me with these minigames is, why am I doing any of this? I should get up and work on stuff now. I'm not engaged with this. This is boring. That's how a solid third of the Ultra Moon experience feels. Remember Pokemon contests? Remember the National Park Olympics thing? Remember Pokemon dancing in black and white? Remember the minigame required to transfer Pokémon from Gen 4 to Gen 5? Remember White Forest and Black City? Remember Seasons? Remember Trainer Call? Remember the Versus Seeker? Remember the weird Battle Tower hybrid in Emerald, Fire Red, and Leaf Green? Remember the Safari Zone? What are these? What are these? What are these other than weird gimmicks that aren't expanded upon, polished, or improved in any way, and instead are thrown out in favor of Pokémon Camera, Pokémon Photoshoot, Pokémon Refresh, Festival Plaza, and the Battle Masons reintegration for the fourth time with no substantial changes whatsoever. This is what I'm talking about when I say that Pokémon has introduced, thrown away, and reintroduced a hundred mechanics in a row, making the game feel weirdly arbitrary. What was the point of the Safari Zone, if it was only going to be thrown away for the next thing? What was the point of Pokémon contests, to enjoy in the moment and then forget about? Why were Pokemon contests not good enough to become a series staple? I don't know what I'm going for. Pokemon is filled to the brim with monsters, moves, items, and abilities, but the fact that half of them aren't good muddies the experience for players who know how to optimize. I'm not going to use half of all Pokemon due to a combination of their lack of battling viability and a lack of visual appeal, and that's a problem when tall grass contains 6 to 10 species per patch. Here is a list of Pokémon from Pokémon Sun and Moon that I am not invested in, and uh, it's not Ultra, but they're the same game. Young Goose, Caterpie, Ladyba, Grubbin, Bonsly, Slowpoke, Wingle, Meowth, Grimer, Drowsy, Zubat, Diglett, Spearow, Vullaby, Petalil, Roggenrola, Finneon, Corsola, Love Disk, Mariani, Lilypup, Surskit, Marlow, Paris, Poliwag, Goldeen, Alamomola, Castform, Tirtuga, Pukimuku, Trubbish, Plus all evolutions. I think it's a good thing that there are so many Pokémon choices because it adds variety to each individual run, and it gives players a lot of options for team building, but a large chunk of Pokémon they chose aren't... good, so every time I encounter one in the wild, I groan. They're not worth my time. Most Route 1 Pokémon are not worth my time. Because, oh, there's the rodent, and oh, there's the bug, and oh, there's the bird, and they don't look great, and I've seen this all before, so pass. Luckily, Ultra Moon brought back some good ones, and I'm pretty happy with my team containing Murkrow, Inke, and Zorua, and Makuhita and Kadabra are okay too. I like seeing Baniri, Furfru, Halucha, and Mawile, those are good ones, and I like them. However, the perfect Pokémon game contains all good choices, despite a good Pokémon being defined purely by consensus and therefore is unattainable. The optimal Pokémon experience contains about 200 Pokémon, and all of them are the best Pokémon ever, and they all dazzle, intrigue, or charm immensely. Imagine a Pokémon game where you go into Route 1 and you see a Pokémon and your mind is blown, and you fall in love with them instantly. That was me in Pokemon Y looking at the 3D rendition of Zigzagoon. And then, Sun and Moon, you see Young Oose and you're just like, I don't care about this in the slightest. Toucanon is like, okay, but not amazing. The process of catching a Pokemon in Ultra Moon goes like this. Run into a new patch of tall grass, find the common one three times in a row, find the rarer one that's cool, catch it, Look at its nature and ability to discover that its nature specifically lowers its most important stat by 10% and that its ability is the less good one. 
So you gotta release that one, go catch another one in the desperate hopes that it has a nature that isn't actively detrimental to its being. The fact that I know so much about Pokémon's mechanics is an active detriment to the play experience, because an Abra with Brave nature is not in the slightest bit okay, it raises attack and lowers speed. I can't turn my brain off and be okay with a suction cup's Inke. The point of Inke is the contrarian ability. Something about this is problematic. Something about this experience is unsatisfying and needs changing. It needs iteration. It needs fixing. But instead, we just get more forms, more mechanics, more Pokémon. You see the problem here? It's somewhere. It's I'm, I, I have to be close to the problem. Okay, I've completely lost track of things because Pokemon is just a big pile of stuff and you can dig for it as long as you want through the pile of Pokemon, but you'll never dig your way out. So let's move on with a stiff and blatant transition. Let's talk about Legendary Pokemon. Legendaries have not been good since Generation 4, and even then only a couple of them were okay. Legendary Pokemon in Red, Blue, Yellow were creatures only talked about in Whispers, and they had to be found by the player. Zapdos, Articuno, Moltres, and Mewtwo were deeply hidden inside of legitimate dungeons so that players chose to go out of their way and play the game and demonstrate some semblance of skill in navigating a maze. And when they got to the Legendary, there was a possibility of failing to capture it. If the Legendary was KO'd, or ran away from, they were gone forever. Even if the wise player saves before the encounter, how's that for stakes? How, is, how does that compare to Solgaleo and Lunala forcing you to capture them and capturing them being a no effort throw the ball at them at full health and they will just give themselves to you? Basically, in the modern Pokemon games, the legendary Pokemon are giant parade floats flaunted by the player from the formulaic by the numbers trailers to the cover of the game to the climax of the narrative. Solgaleo and Lunala are Pokemon which every player in the game will encounter because the game forces players to encounter them, and capture them. The fact that every player will do this, and the fact that the game forces players to do it, makes the Pokémon feel not special anymore. They're not fun or interesting, not even in the context of the narrative. Seeing Solgaleo dive into the Ultra Hole in Pokémon Sun? Didn't do much for me. Didn't do much for me. Remember what makes Haolucha special? The fact that he's just kinda there. You can encounter and capture him if you want, but you don't have to, so the fact that I chose to capture him was a meaningful in-game decision, and a unique game state which other players might not get. I get a sense of self-expression by catching Halucha and nicknaming it Rawcock. Additionally, legendary Pokémon require a lot of experience points to level up and are captured with zero effort values at a high level, making them difficult to even integrate into one's team. Even more, most legendary Pokémon are banned from battling facilities because their base stats are too high anyway, giving them no place to shine outside of the cutscenes that I don't care about and what remains of the main story. What am I supposed to do with these Pokémon if not battle them? What meaningful trade can I make of these Pokémon when everyone else has one? There's nothing. Into the box they go. Event Pokémon are even worse. Players go to GameStop and they get handed a card, or they awkwardly pull out their DSs like a couple of Spurgs in the store and the game just gives them a Pokémon. I didn't earn this. I walked into the Pokémon Center and a generic delivery man or nurse handed me a Keldeo. What can I even do with a Keldeo? Nothing, because he's banned. He's banned, even though his stats are exactly the same as Tarakian's but switched for special attack, but because he's special, he's banned. Legendary Pokémon are not real Pokémon, because they have no place to be Pokémon. The point is, the more the game facilitates itself through cutscenes, non-optional pre-scripted scenarios, and outside events, the less Pokémon feels like a game, and the more it feels like nothing. Legendary Pokémon haven't been interesting or appealing since Gen 3, because every generation of Pokémon since Gen 3 have had the exact same legendary Pokémon used in the exact same narrative and mechanical way. A team of bad guys introduce themselves early on and fight the player with Zubats and Puchiena. Team causes mild mischief throughout the player's adventure. They gain a mystical item and summon a legendary Pokémon in an attempt to gain power. The Pokémon goes berserk and threatens to destroy the world. The player encounters the Pokémon and KOs or catches it, and the world is saved. We've been through the motions over ten times here, and it's not an interesting story anymore, no matter how many times you fuse your legendaries with the previously useless one. I don't care about Reshiram. I don't care about Zekrom. I don't care about Zygarde or Yveltal, and I certainly don't care about Solgaleo or Lunala. I'm nostalgic for Groudon, Kyogre, and Rayquaza at best. 
and yet these legendary Pokémon are treated as THE appeal of the game, starring on the covers, and the justification for making a new game in the first place. How is the appeal of, ooh, what's this new and mythical Pokémon gonna be about work when we know exactly what they're gonna be about before we even boot the game? Water, land, time, space, fire, electricity, the sun, the moon, it's all the same. World goes out of balance, and then it's saved. Shonen stuff. Get out of here. The appeal of Pokémon is, I want to play a fun game where I catch and battle Pokémon. I want to do things. I want to perform actions in this game. I don't want an action to happen to me. It feels misguided for every Pokémon to flaunt its legendaries and their Dusk Form Rocco Doggos and their Coin Purse Munchlax and their Keldeos and their Qrems and their brand new Ultra Beasts because they're not even cool. They'd honestly be cooler if they weren't on the game cover and if getting them felt at all earned. The last thing I'd like to rant about is that whenever a player gains a new item or menu slot in Pokémon Sun, Moon, Ultra Sun, or Ultra Moon, they get this obnoxious new message right next to it. I hate this. I came here to have a good time, and honestly, I'm feeling so patronized right now. What is this, a mobile game? You think I can't keep track of my own inventory? Why does this game feel the need to divert my attention because I picked up another useless held item? The game already told me what's in my inventory when I picked up the item. I picked up the sharp beak or whatever. Look, it says Steven picked up the sharp beak. This is like, ugh, bad, bad, no. No. Bad. In conclusion, Pokémon Ultra Moon is a Pokémon just like all the other ones, and I'm making it off board of it. If you have played a Pokémon game before, then Ultra Moon does not introduce enough substantial content to be worth the time and money put into it. And if you've played Pokémon Sun or Moon before, which you have since those games are one of the top three best-selling games of all time, then you really don't have to play Pokémon Ultra Sun or Ultra Moon, because Pikachu Valley and the slight change in cutscenes and the weird mustache dudes feel like nothing. There's no substantial difference, once again, between the games to justify d going through all the, all the hoops, jumping through all the hoops again. Don't jump through the hoops! Pokemon has you jump through so many hoops and it's not worth it, because Pokemon Ultra Moon is not the best Pokemon game, nor does it stand above the better traditional Japanese role-playing game experiences. I am addicted, and I need to stop, but I played it so that I could make a timely, relevant review and get those sick mad subscribers, tune in for Cuphead and A Hat in Time and all that.